Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Bars. Today, I'm going to be talking about the Voce Micro B2 B3 organ module. So, stick around. And we're back. So today I'm going to be talking about an organ module that I picked up recently on the cheap and I absolutely love this thing. Can't wait to tell you about it and exactly what it is, what it does, and how great it sounds. This is the Voce Micro B2 and let me pop up a picture up the front of it here. Look at that. Very attractive little one-third space guy. Let's start with the back however, because there's a few things that you need to know about this that might change your mind. So first of all, power button. A lot of really cheap companies, Behringer, Yamaha, Phonic, they don't even bother putting power buttons on their devices. You just plug it in and go, right? So to me, that's actually a small detail that I appreciate that it has one of those. Some standard stuff over here. We've got quarter inch out. It does chorus, so there's go left and right, or chorus one, chorus two, as they're labeled. Um, of course, the, you have MIDI in and a through. You can plug in a sustain pedal here. Uh, there's an old school analog dial for your MIDI channel. I just leave it on Omni. Now here's something that's very interesting that I like a lot about this piece. It has a tuning knob on it. So let's say you wanted to do something with a 432, you could actually tune this device to that and crank out some A40, A432 songs. If you're interested in the difference between A440 and A432 and its psychological effect on the human psyche, there's plenty of vids on YouTube to check out and I recommend all of them. So let's go back to the front of this dog now and I want to show off this thing because it is just the coolest device you can ever have. So, most important knob, of course, over here all the way to the left, volume knob, right? No brainer there. The other thing that you need to know then is the preset knob all the way over here. Now, this guy has 36 presets in it. What they've done is they've taken the different combinations that you can make with draw bars on like a B3 organ and they've come up with their own. So they've sort of already done the, all the research for you. I know there's guys out there that like to shape the tones and whatnot, and they have their favorites, and that's great. And if you can afford one of the more expensive ones that has that, definitely get it. I'm not saying those are bad, but this does not disappoint, right? They've got 36 presets on there, and pretty much most sounds are going to be covered. So let's just kind of dial through some. Anyways, you see how they just have a plethora of groovy sounds, organ sounds. Next on this that I want to point out is the Leslie emulator. B3 organs usually mate to a Leslie speaker, which is a mechanical device that rotates, physically rotates a speaker and gives you that whirring sound. And there's usually two speeds. There'd be a button, giant huge button that'd come with the B3 and you'd go fast or slow. And this guy is no different. It's got, on their little preset knob here, it's got some different rotary settings, and there is a button right next to it that engages the fast slow, so. You can hear it actually speed up, and this has a really interesting feature in that it has two variations on the slowdown. So the first one, disengage it, you can still hear it whirring in and out really slow. Now the second setting, bring it up to speed, this time when we slow it down, it's just a single pulse, it just kind of flatlines. Two variations, subtle things like that really make this kind of a cool little piece. 
Now the other settings on here are, um, there's three different vibratos, right? There's some choruses, and then they've got some combinations that are choruses with different uh, rotary speakers and vibratos with different rotary speakers. I pretty much just stick to either rotary one or rotary two, leave all the choruses and vibratos for, um, for someone else. You can only do so much with, with a B3 these days. Now the other cool things on this is the key click. What is the key click you're asking? Well, the early B3s had a mechanical problem when you press down the keys is it would make a, a ticking sound, right? Like think um, a playing card in like uh, spokes of a tire, right? So this is like without the click, with the click, and you can actually dial that in. There's a little knob here that gives you the volume. Where you can add that sound in. A lot of guys like that from that 60s boogaloo kind of jazz sound that had those types of organs on it. That click really became sort of the sound, especially on some of the Booker T recordings. You can really hear organs that have that. The other features on here is um, there's some extra... Uh, harmonics and um, and decays you can put on. So this is like put the harmonic out. With it in. Out. Put it in. Not bad. Um, I don't know if you're ever going to use some of these things. It, I guess it just depends on the player. But I like that it has it. They work really well. They sound pretty good. They're all very subtle. One other feature on the front here I'd like to show you is it has an overdrive. Now a lot of guys like to take their keyboards and run them through some type of a guitar pedal, like a uh, tube screamer, some kind of an overdrive, give a little gnarliness. This comes with an overdrive knob on it. I like to say the overdrive knob essentially does Nothing. There's absolutely nothing on this piece. It's just a little bit of a boost. Here, I'll take some click down. Just kind of gives you a couple dB boost. It doesn't really give you any kind of overdrive. So if you're, if you're into that, you're going to have to go back to a guitar pedal, I'm afraid, on this. Um, would I give that a mark against this? Ah, uh, not really. I wasn't expecting it to come with overdrive. I was kind of uh, surprised that it does. I know the Hughes & Kettner tube uh, rotosphere Leslie simulator has an overdrive on it. Um, it also has a little tube in it as well. And it's really subtle as what I remember about it. So if you want something kind of heavier, something kind of like the guy from Deep Purple, you're going to have to go through more of a guitar pedal if you want that. So what I would like to talk about next is some of the presets on here that can only be achieved through a MIDI controller. Now I told you that on the, um, on the top of this thing there is a list of all the presets. There they are. You can see them. And if you look at the front here, right, of the preset knob, you see it goes up to 22. Now, if you look at our list, you'll see that it actually goes up to 36. So how do you get from 23 to 36? Well, if you have a controller, right, that can, um, that can send MIDI program changes, you can actually select those. I'm going to do that right now. And this is... You have to put it on P. This is program 35. This is the Farfisa sound. Let's hear it with a little bit of roto. Let's go to 
the Vox Continental. sounds overall. Now another feature about this that I figured out, and um, this is not in the manual, this is an advanced hack, you're going to get directly from my heart to you. Interesting sample and hold effect you can get if you just hold down a note and you scroll through the presets. <laughs> Alright, that's kind of a cool hack you can do. That's my basic introduction to the Micro B2 from Voce. It's a great little one-third rack space piece that they put out. Has a lot of agreeable sounds, has a lot of cool features. Pass on the overdrive, uh, but everything else, in my opinion, is ooh la la. So with that, I will bid everyone adieu.